I'm going to be talking about something a little bit different today uh, when talking about the Heat. They got a big win against the Suns last night, but there's something that's been a trend over the last few games that they're kind of shifting. Uh, there's been a lot of hot topics of they've been really good offensively, uh, but what are they going to do defensively? They're smaller. They're switching a ton. Uh, you've got Kyle Lowry and Aiton a ton down low. What is the adjustment? Well, we saw the adjustment slightly last night. Uh, and we've pretty much seen it the last few games, and I'm just going to basically showcase – what we're seeing is a certain shot profile that Miami's looking for. Uh, and Cameron Payne is pretty a good example of that in this game specifically, but we've seen it with a ton of different players uh, in the Charlotte two game stretch. And then this one. So I'm just going to showcase a bunch of clips from this, these last three games. And it's basically they're forcing this type of shot, the little floater inside the lane. They're not letting you get to the rim and they're not letting you shoot threes uh, at a high clip in general off the dribble. What, uh, the Bucks are a team that does this a ton. Like they are the ones that have basically adjusted this, but they have the personnel to do it at another level because they have an elite rim protector in Brooke Lopez. They have an elite kind of weak side Romer and Giannis, and then they have an elite uh, screen navigator in Drew Holiday. So they basically said that we're just going to give you mid range shot after mid range shot after mid range shot, and it's uh, a very good you know way of playing because it's not at the highest uh, efficiency shot. So keeping it going. Cameron Payne last night, once again, coming off of this, gets the middle of the floor, getting into that floater shot, and he's not knocking it down. But the thing to look at is that they were – it's something I didn't catch a ton of because I saw it at times, but I didn't realize the amount that they got to it. They were putting Bam and drop a ton last night, which is something I've been calling for for a while. They need to play him in more drop just because we hear the word Bam and versatility and being that high-level defender being able to guard guards. He's just as great in drop. Like He's just an all-around great defender. So him being able to contain in this drop, they're going to give up that shot, especially with Gabe recovering. Doesn't knock that one down. Another example kind of throws it up because Bam's containing at the rim. They're not letting him get to the rim, and they're not letting him get that pull-up three because Gabe's going to kind of chase him off of that three-point line. Once again, another form of drop. He's shooting that floater at the free throw line. He ends up hitting this one. But just because he hit it doesn't change the process of this. Like That is not a good shot. That's not the shot that they want. Here's another example of that comes through, hits the floater at the elbow. They're going to give up that shot. If he knocks that down and they he hits it consistently, that they lose the game because Cameron Payne's hitting floaters from the free throw line, well, then they lose the game because that is not going to happen uh, all the time. And if they does, they just going to live with it. Once again, going over on the screen into a bam drop, kind of comes up short on it. They were just forcing him into these same looks over and over. Now that's an even crazier shot up at the free throw line. Now, this was the one with 50 seconds left. He gets to the middle of the floor and he hits it. Uh, but like I said, the end of the game, if that's what's going to happen with campaign, it's going to happen with campaign. They literally wanted this shot all night. And the fact that they're going drop, I think, is a good sign to see what they're going to. Uh, but campaign isn't the only time we're seeing this. We're seeing this a ton. Even let me finish off this Suns game and say uh, that with the zone with Mikhail Bridges right here, uh, they basically sent a double at, at Devin Booker. Uh, he's going to hit the middle of Mikhail Bridges. Bam's just basically going to contain at the rim and not even go up there because that's the shot they want, and he can't knock it down, the little flip shot. So uh, now I'm going to go into this Hornets game, but the interesting thing about this, it's funny because it's comparable to the zone. We've talked a lot about the 2-3 zone, and if you go back to, like, Little League ball, the thing they say about beating a zone is basically you have to flash middle, and what happens when you flash middle is usually the defense pinches in a bit that they want you to kind of you know pinch in on the free throw line with the guy with the ball. He aren't really doing that. They're just basically saying, you make a play from the free throw line. We're staying home on shooters. We're going to have Bam down low or, or even Deadman down low. Just stay glued to that guy below the rim. Uh, and you just have to make a decision from there. And it's basically working because it's not a high you know, efficiency shot, like I said before. Uh, but here we go right here. P.J. Washington right in the middle of the zone gets this. He was one of the ones that kept getting in the middle of the floor and kind of missing that push shot in one of these games. Uh, and it was just really helping Miami. But uh, Kelly Oubre is another one of these guys. It's funny because there's certain – like Devin Booker, they're not going to give the shot to consistently. They're not playing this play style against Devin Booker. They're not going to probably play this play style against a lot of the like very good scorers. But guys that can be inefficient at, at times, like uh, a campaign, like a Terry Rozier, like a lot of these guys, they're going to do it. So Kelly Oubre, even though he was kind of cooking Miami a lot of the, in both of these games, playing really well – uh, they're going to give up this shot to Kelly Oubre as well all day. Like right here, playing a little bit more drop. That's kind of fumbling it, gets it up in the air, and he not, doesn't knock it down. Once again, gets it up in the air, floater, can't get it to go. Uh, you're going to keep seeing it. This one is a switch, but still, uh, they're still trying to force this shot even on switches. Like they're going to pinch down inside the lane, as you see with Gabe right here, trying to wait as long as possible. Now Kelly Oubre takes a tough baseline fade, 
Once again, now and drop again with Bam. Now he's double clutching. This is Terry Rozier. This is the type of guy that you want to do this with, like the campaigns and Terry Rozier's getting inside the lane, gets a pull-up jumper. Bam gets a piece of it, uh, which is funny because that doesn't even represent what they're doing. Bam is just a, just a freak of an athlete defensively. He doesn't even allow that shot. He just goes up and blocks it anyway. Right. So again, they're pinching down, especially with when they have somebody on the floor. Let's say in the Portland game, it was Justice Winslow. In the Hornets game, it was uh, Dennis Smith Jr. When you don't trust a certain shooter, it even makes this tougher because then you can't even get a comfy floater if you're the opposing offense because they're not. They're just going to force you to take the, make the kick out to the guy that's not the best shooter on the floor. Like you see right here, it's just a tough shot in general. You can't get it to go. Here we see a little bit of zone, and this is what I'm talking about. Like you. If you're the offense against a 2-3 zone, you're saying to yourself, just get to the middle of the floor, and that's a win for us. But Miami isn't really thinking that. Like They're not saying if you get to the middle of the floor, it's a win because they're now forcing you to hit a tough runner. Like right here, Terry Rozier goes a little Euro over the top of the 2-3, uh, goes right over the top. Now he's taking a tough floater, and it's just it's short. Like That stuff is what they want. And I know I'm harping on a lot of the good stuff because we haven't seen a ton of good stuff defensively. Like I'm not going to sit here and lie and act like it is. But this little portion of what they're doing, because this isn't their base. This is something they're mixing in. This is something we're seeing from time to time. It's, this is kind of the idea of what they want to get to, I think, at some point is their base. Because I don't think they want to do it this early on. They're going to mix it in with certain guys. But it's pretty promising. Like right here, another one. This is just a one-on-one -on -one match. But it's got a max staying strong and forcing that type of shot in the middle. This stuff also allows Bam to be able to be glued to the basket, get more defensive rebounds, which they haven't been bad with, by the way. Uh, even though they've been smaller. Another one, uh, this one's with Book Knight getting to the middle of the floor, taking a floor. It's just a lot of the same play over and over. It feels like I'm just replaying the same thing, but these are all different clips. This is something that Miami's done in the last three games, and it's uh, pretty much taken a jump in the last three games. I think we've seen it, it all throughout the season mixed in, but we're seeing it a much higher clip these last three games because they're figuring out what they want to get to, and this is pretty much going to be their identity. They always talk about their identity, and this is going to be one of their defensive identities because they're going to trust the, the Gabe Vincents and the Caleb Martins of the world to be able to chase guys around screen. When I asked Gabe the other night about this specific stuff, about these push shots, uh, he was pretty much telling me that's that's what the stack guys upstairs say. Like th This is what uh, not only the eye test, the film says, but the stack guys are basically telling them that keep giving those guys the shots because it's going to lead to good process.